G'day everyone, uh, a bit of a trip away this weekend and we had a battery light come on here and we had 12 volts here, it's now disconnected, but we only had 12 volts here where we should be charging at 14 and a half. Uh, the alternator has packed up, which is not a big deal, it's been on the car for a very, very long time. But along with it, shortly thereafter, we lost our stereo, we lost the ability to come out of park without using the override, we lost our speedo, we also lost our electric windows, we lost indicators, and the central locking no longer worked. Um, if you have these symptoms, the issue is the 100 amp alternator fuse here. You can see it here. You have to buy the whole block. They're about 70 bucks. Uh, get them online or whatever you need to do. I believe my alternator has blown the fuse for me because the alternator packed up first and it was very, very shortly after we lost all the electronics. Uh, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna change out the alternator. Uh, I'll show you how we do that. Have a look inside the alternator once we get it off. And we'll change out that fuse block uh, second. Just make sure we disconnect the battery so we don't damage the fuse there if you put a new one in first. And uh, let's get to it. Let's get that alternator out. We're just gonna remove this accessory belt here and the alternator is down in the bottom corner. Our best bet is to get it through the wheel arch. This pulley here does need to come off. It's in the way of the bolt that retains the alternator. So we'll just have to take this pulley out. It's a 14 mil socket. And we'll just move it out of the way for now and put it back on once the new alternator is fitted. Okay, so we've taken the plug out the back of the alternator and we've undone the little nut on the stud and we can see here that the little insulator is actually melted to the terminal there so we have to sort that out and there's a couple of bolts to hold the alternator on we'll just undo those and we'll either bring it out through here or we'll come up through the top whatever's going to be easier all right with that pulley dealt with we have 14 mil socket on the top bolt of the alternator there we're just going to use a little flex head ratchet we're going to crack that and then we're going to go for the bottom one we'll pull it out and the bottom one is much the same. It's just a 12 millimeter socket this time around and we'll whip it out. Okay, well there's our old alternator. It um, spins okay, but it doesn't sound great. It's done a lot of miles, so we'll uh, have a look at it in a bit once I've got the new one fitted. All right, this is the new and the old together. We do have a bit of a sliding spacer in here that'll slide up and take up the slack without being too loose in its uh, mounting housing. So just leave that as it is. When we pull the bolt in, this will move if it's required to, to fill that gap. But uh, comparably, they are the same. Let's stick this one in. Okay, we've got the melted piece off the terminal, and it was melted, very much so. I'm just going to clean up the terminal, a uh, bit of sandpaper before we put it all together, of course. Drop the alternator in, and uh, we're good. You may need to return this back to all the way home, because it does move when you install the new alternator. So... If you want to get it in and you've got a sleeve on this end and a sleeve there you may need to remove that sleeve all the way home first just to fit the alternator uh, depending on your alternator you may even need to remove that sleeve entirely but i'll leave the factory one in it keeps all the belts aligned i just used a spacer a nut a bolt and i just pulled it in to get the adjuster back into the right spot there we'll take all that back out and we'll be able to fit the alternator Okay, new alternator is in. I did have to loosen this little bracket at the bottom a little bit just so I get the bottom bolt in. Uh, push the plug in and I've just nipped up the little terminal there that I've cleaned up. I'm gonna spray some preservative over the top of that so it lasts a bit longer. Stands out against all my red dirt, this new alternator, but that's how it looks. We'll whack the belt back on. That pulley's gotta go back on first, belt on, and then I'll fix that 100 amp fuse. It is worth knowing that I did remove the wheel at one point just to get the alternator in. It's a bit hard with the wheel still on, but you can leave it on and do it, but I just took it off because it made life a lot easier to do so. All right, so the fusible link, we're gonna have to undo all of these clips here and lift the entire fusible link up. We'll start by removing this cover here and we'll lift the whole unit up. We're gonna re replace this white bit. Okay, so we wanna get this terminal off here. There's two clips at the top one clip at the side another one on this side and there's two at the bottom six clips in total get this terminal off and then we can lift the whole assembly up okay so i put the nut back on once i've got the terminal off so i can grab the stud i tried to grab the plastic and i broke it so don't do that i'm just going to hold constant pressure on this while we unhook all these little tabs keep holding the pressure and eventually the whole thing is going to come up uh, like this is starting to i've got three tabs i'm just going to keep going move along get all the tabs this section's likely to come out with it as well so i guess we'll find out okay i've got it mostly up here and i'm just going to start undoing these 
I've got 10 mil heads on them. Just start undoing these. There's one on this side as well. Just hidden down there. Get rid of those and we can pull the whole link out. I've had to order a new one in because I don't have one local. So we have soldered it without any flux. So let's see how that looks. But it's uh, hopefully going to work until my new one gets here. Okay, now we have to do is put the two plugs back in the bottom like I've done. We're just going to screw all the terminals back on. This one on this side is an 8 mil. We'll plug it all back in. Hopefully that works and gets us out of a jam for now until the new one gets here. Okay, so that's all reconnected. I've got my fusible link in there now. Just waiting for the new one, like we said. We'll start it up and hopefully everything is all good. And that's it. It's all working again. We've got voltage at idle, which is good. And everything works again as it should. Okay, with the alternator off, um, I've taken the back off the alternator here. It's four nuts and four little screws here on these windings. And we can have a look at what's wrong with it. And we can have a look at just how it works. Now, most of these four wheel drive alternators, especially on the Hilux, it's quite low down there, right in the wheel arch. Uh, the biggest thing that's gonna kill it is dirt entry, moisture entry, mud, all them things that are gonna go in there. And I definitely think that's the case here. It was fully caked with mud. There was a lot of dirt in there as well and the bearing is, is fairly full of, of debris. So we'll have a look just inside and see how these things operate. Okay, so let's have a look inside the alternator and the components that we have. Uh, I'm no alternator expert, but I'll show you what I know. We have this backing plate here, which is fairly irrelevant. That just covers up all of this section here that we've just removed from over here. We have a pair of brushes here that all our current is gonna travel through, through the voltage regulator and we have three rectifiers here. Now the rectifiers uh, allow us to change AC current into DC current through the use of diodes. And all of our current is gonna travel out through this one point here, through to the battery where we had this melted section here. It's quite corroded. We have a lot of issues going on there. Inside here is where the bearing is gonna sit, this bearing here. And we have two slipper rings here that the brushes are gonna run against in order for the current to travel through it. This section in the middle is called the rotor and it turns much like this. It has a little fan on there to keep it cool as well. And we have field windings or a stator on the outside here. The stator is stationary, which makes a lot of sense. And all our current is generated through these windings with the rotor having a magnetic field. As it turns, it generates a current, which is all transmitted through these four here into our rectifier pack here. And at the front, the rotor is driven off the accessory belt of the engine. Now, some of these have overrunning clutches nowadays, which basically means it'll drive in one direction and the other direction, it'll allow it to continue to idle. Even if this is slowing down, the alternator would be more efficient if as this slows down, the alternator continues to turn as fast as it possibly can. So some of these have a one-way clutch on them nowadays or an overrunning clutch. That's pretty much all that's in there. This bearing here has totally had it. Uh, there's a lot of dirt and debris in here and you can see here, Quite a bit of corrosion going on on our little pole here that is generating all the power into the battery. Probably wasn't very efficient towards the end there. The brush is a little bit worn, but usually you can tidy this sort of stuff up and rebuild these. I'm not going to bother for the price, but that's pretty much everything that goes inside these alternators.